Entrepreneur on Fire, episode 65. Welcome to EntrepreneurOnFire.com, where remarkable entrepreneurs share their inspiring story. Let their journey illuminate your path to success. And now, your host, John Dumas. Fire Nation, do you have a product or service that you would like to share with the 100,000 plus unique downloads a month Entrepreneur on Fire generates? Chris Brogan did, and when he sponsored an episode, he saw great results. If you like to have 15 seconds at the top of our show to share your product or message, go to www.sponsoreofire.com to find out more. Okay, let's get started. I am simply electrified to introduce my guest today, Nikhil Aurora. Nikhil, are you prepared to ignite? I am excited to ignite, John. All right, I'm pumped too. Back to the Roots was founded by Alejandro Velez and Nikhil Aurora. They came across the idea during a class lecture of being able to potentially grow gourmet mushrooms entirely on recycled coffee grounds. Too cool. Inspired by the idea of turning waste into wages and fresh local food, they became full-time urban mushroom farmers and Back to the Roots was born. This is really exciting stuff, Nikhil. I've given Fire Nation a little overview, but why don't you take a minute, tell us about you personally, how old you are, where you're from, and then take another minute to tell us about your business. Sure. So um, my name is Nick Hill. I'm 25 years old. I'm one of the co-founders of Back to the Roots. And uh, you introduced it right now. We're an urban mushroom farm right here in uh, Oakland, California, growing gourmet mushrooms and these mushroom kits on entirely recycled coffee grounds. And our whole vision is kind of making food personal again and connecting people to, to food through really cool experiences. And in this case, it's taking a waste and helping people grow food on it. And, um, you know, quick backstory, like neither of us had any background, Alex, sorry, had any background in, in food and agriculture and farming. We we're both undergraduate business majors uh, at UC Berkeley, uh, both undergrads there. And it was our last semester in, uh, in college, we were in a business ethics class. And we both heard our professor bring up this fact, and looking back now, super random fact, that you could possibly grow gourmet mushrooms on different agricultural waste streams, one of them being coffee grounds. And we both fell in love with that idea. Um, we didn't know each other at the time. He connected us both. We turned Alex's fraternity kitchen into a mini science experiment, started growing some test buckets, uh, got some support from Whole Foods and Shea Panisa here at a local restaurant, got a small 5K grant from our chancellor a couple weeks before graduation, and uh, I had an offer to go into, con- go into consulting. Alex had an offer to go into investment banking. And, you know, we looked at each other about two weeks away from graduation and kind of said, you know what, forget that stuff. Full time urban mushroom farming it is and dove into it. And it's just been a roller coaster since then. <laughs> roller coaster is a great word for an entrepreneur, Nikhil. And when I first heard and read about your story, it was either an Inc. or Fast Company or Entrepreneur Magazine. Which one was it? Uh, I think it's an entrepreneur. Okay, it was an entrepreneur magazine. I read all three, so they always kind of mold together. But I read about your story in Entrepreneur Magazine. It was so fascinating. I just had to re- reach out to you because I love what you're doing. It's so out of the box. I'm really excited to delve more into it later. But before we do, let's start to show off how we start every show with a success quote. Entrepreneur on fire, we like to get the motivational ball rolling, and it's hard to do it any other way better than with a success quote. So what do you have for Fire Nation, Nikhil? Yeah, so actually one qu- quote that always really inspired me and kind of helps me guide, guide me every day is actually by Will Smith. And it's, uh, I'm kind of paraphrasing it here, but he talks about how you don't go out and try to build a wall and say, like, I'm going to build the biggest, baddest wall that's ever been built. You say, I'm going to lay this one brick as perfectly as a brick can be laid. And you do that every single day. And before you know it, you have a wall. And I think for me, it's always meant like, you know, you don't build a company overnight. It's just like you do every single thing you do, every action you take, every person you talk to, every kit you sell. In this case, you do it with all your energy and all your passion. And you do it like as perfectly as you possibly can do that one seemingly small thing. And then before you know it, in a year, in two years, you look back and like, damn, I've built we built something of value of substance here, but it's that repetition of like one after another, just doing these small things right with a ton of passion every time. And that quote from Will Smith is like sticks in my head. And like, even when like sometimes you're in the grind and like you're 
in the weeds about trying to figure something out. You know what? It's like I'm going to just put all my energy. In this. It seems small, but if I figure this out, that's going to make a big difference, you know? I love that. And most people don't realize that both Will Smith and Bill Cosby, they're just not known for giving quotes. Both of them have been quoted multiple times on the show. I will make sure that the exact quote that you did a very good job of paraphrasing of for Will Smith is up in the show notes after the show. So I'm really just glad that you brought that one because it sends such a great message. And Nikhil, take us down to the ground level real quick because that's what Entrepreneur on Fire is all about. We want to be taken to the ground level of your life, of your story. How have you applied this quote to your life? Yeah, I, I mean, I think for us, it's, it's been, um, I mean, looking back now where we're at, you know, it's been two and a half years and we're in a 10,000 square foot warehouse in Oakland. We've converted to a mushroom farm. We've, you know, on pace to divert 3.6 million pounds of coffee grounds this year from the landfill and in like 2,500 retailers. It's really cool stepping back and seeing where, we, where we're at now. We're really, we're really excited about it. We're excited about the future, but it's like that's only been created for us, but like, day in and day out just just hustle we say to this hustle is passion and you know we're still working 6 to 6 a.m to like 9 p.m every single day um you know and for us like this 3.6 million pounds of coffee grounds doesn't show up overnight it's like one bag at a time one cafe relationship at a time one morning collection at a time and doing that right and doing it you know with energy and it's just like it's it's one here in this case like we're, we're still you know we make all the mushroom kits ourselves. it's like thousand pounds of coffee grounds come in and you know, teams touching them and everyone's adding different parts of value to it, but it's like one kit at a time and making sure that one kit is just perfect, you know, so when a customer gets it, they really love it. Um, and for us, like we both, in terms of marketing, we haven't spent a dime on marketing yet. It's all been just demos in stores and talking to thousands and thousands of customers, but at the individual level, it's like we take so much pride and passion for like, we want, we will say like every person we talk to this company, every demo we do, every person who walks by that demo table, we talk to, we want them to talk to them with like such intensity and focus and passion that they like never forget that conversation. And like that added up by a thousand, all of a sudden now you have like a mass community supporting you, but it's like one person at a time. I love it. And the quote just even applies even better now when you explain it that way, because instead of one brick, you're doing one coffee bag at a time. Exactly. It's, just, it's, uh, it's crazy. You know, one bag at a time, a couple of pounds here, a couple of pounds there. Next thing you know, it adds up to something of like, whoa, that's a lot of coffee. <laughs> so Nikhil, let's transition now to our next topic and that's failure. Entrepreneur on Fire is about your journey as an entrepreneur. Now, you're 25 years old. That's pretty young as far as the life of a typical entrepreneur, but you've still had obstacles, challenges, and failures that have peppered your past as, as they've peppered every past of every entrepreneur because it's our job to fail every single day as entrepreneurs because if we're not failing, we're not pushing our limits. Take us back to a time when you failed personally as an entrepreneur and really share with Fire Nation how you overcame that obstacle. I don't agree with what you said in terms of failings. It's, uh, as we all cycle, we made every mistake underneath the sun. Um, back to the roots and learned a ton weather and still making mistakes every day and we always say if we, you know if we're doing the same thing for a couple months in a row we haven't made any changes that was a big problem there because we're we know we're doing something wrong right now it's just how fast can we catch that you know and grow and get better and better at it and i mean one big failing we had was just a summer it's a big big lesson learned and that was around just trying to match in this case sales projections with production and we were just flat out off and wrong and overproduced a ton and with mushroom kits, that's that's not something like you're producing, you know, uh, steel or iron that can sit for quite a. It's like a living, it's a living plant, and we we lost. I mean, thousands of kits. We had um, a host of whole the issues that comes up with that. You know, stretched our cash flow to the limit because you know you're spending real money for making all this inventory, and then it's just sitting on your shelves, and you're like, that's not turning any, any anything for you, and it was just a. Uh, is the last couple of months were really, really tough and a lot of lessons learned. But um, I think we've taken, like you say, you learn the most by diving into it and making the mistakes. And I, I think we've come out of it now, especially just in time now, which we're, we're excited about. You know, we do about 70% of our sales in the fourth quarter this year. So um, it's a big, big time of the year for us coming up the next eight, 10 weeks. And we're just like, we made a big mistake in the summer. But we're like, you know what? At least the positive side, thank God that was. We made that then and not now, and now we can really kind of regroup and get our strategy together and just have an absolute incredible fourth quarter and take this company to the next level, you know? So it's just like, I think as an entrepreneur, it's just, you, you got to take every 
every failing and I think that's almost that's what makes entrepreneurship is people who can fail and as quickly as you fail, realize the learnings from it, learn, like, learn, realize the positive from it, you know, and take it and run with it. So That is a great attitude to have, Nikhil. And thank you for just being so open and honest with Fire Nation about a failure that you have because that can be a very sensitive subject for a lot of people. But, you know, it's when we're able to talk about it and to dissect it that we're really able to improve upon it for the next go round. And I have no doubt that that failure is going to turn into a success because you're willing to do so. So congratulations for that. And can you pull out one specific lesson that you learned from that failure that you've applied to your business? Yeah, so this, one of the biggest lessons learned from that, and maybe it's, it's really specific for manufacturing, but I think it's in a startup how lean and flexible you got to be in terms of production and um, Production projections are two things we've learned how closely they go hand in hand. And we don't have the luxury in a startup of having our annual fiscal plans and things like that. You know, one big new account that hits or misses can totally change everything. It's just being able to react to that a lot quicker. So, our biggest lesson learned is you know, we're now asking our whole sales team, production team, much more weekly meetings now. Like, Checking our projections, or our assumptions every single week now, just where we know we're on top of it. Um, I think last, you know, we had quarterly goals over the summer, and we're like, all right, here's our Q3 goals, and didn't really reevaluate those fast enough, um, and weren't flexible enough on those. And now it's like lesson learned. We just got to be on our, you know, every week it's on it. So it was just, it's, I think it's more for the for manufacturing, but very, very real for us. I love it. And just a little side note to Fire Nation. You guys are actually hearing an entrepreneur at work right now, which I love and I just think is so fascinating. This isn't just some abstract guy talking about abstract theories. This is a guy who is actually applying his theories, his desires, his passions to his business in his business right now. And you can hear it behind him. He is working. It's all around him. Just a great atmosphere. I'm loving it, Nikhil. So let's just continue to drive forward and now yeah. go to the other end of the spectrum, which is the aha moment. You share with us an aha moment that you had in college when your professor said that random comment. And entrepreneurs live and die on aha moments. We have these every single day in small doses, but every now and then we do really have that one major light bulb that comes on and really shows us the way. And just is something that we know is going to resonate so well with our audience, with our clients, with our future clients. Can you share with Fire Nation an aha moment that you've had at Back to the Roots that's just been amazing? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I appreciate your, your support for our surroundings. I'm uh, literally in the middle of our, uh, of our mushroom farm right now. So I love it. I wish it was video. Coffee guns are being dried right next to me. They're being in mixed with the seeds it's the whole production's happening right here so it's a small little area but it's a, it's fun it's all hands on so uh but in terms of i think the aha moment, i mean our definitely our number one aha moment was that idea in college and i think that was where we got the inspiration from it and realized there's something really cool about that idea of turning waste into food and um ran with that for a while but i think the second kind of maybe more practical aha moment that we had was for a while we started off growing the fresh mushrooms the local we would sell them to local farmers markets and Whole Foods and um, the bulk wholesale produce. And then along the way, we had a lot of people ask us, like, hey, that's kind of cool, but can we do it ourselves? And that's where this whole idea of the Grow at Home Mushroom Kits came about, which is now our main product. And um, for a while, we were doing both of these. And we had a warehouse split 50-50, half of it for the fresh mushroom production, half of it for the mushroom kit production. And it, you know, for we thought we could do both of them. And uh, for a while, you know, we were trying to do both of them, and we were probably maybe at the end of it. This is maybe a year and a half ago now, about two or three weeks away from going on a business. And we quickly realized that what was happening was that these are two very, very different business models. You had one where you're growing fresh, just wholesale produce, and the second thing, the mushroom kits, was a consumer branded item that take a lot different type of work to get that going. And um, we ended up having to make that decision that we got to pick one of these. And, and run with it and we felt that you know we could we could build like a national brand a movement around the kids in the kitchens across the country versus in 20 years still be like a five mile radius mushroom farm and um, decided to kind of stop the fresh mushroom production which at that time was our baby and one of the toughest decisions we had to make and just run fast with these mushroom kits that were still so new but it's just incredible seeing their 
the response sense that and putting all your energy and focus into, into one thing, in this case just these mushroom kits and going from one Berkeley Whole Foods to you know, Home Depot, Safeway and um, soon Toys R Us now as well. So, and I think that aha moment for us was like in a startup, it's all about focus and like you got to pick one thing and just say, I'm going to do that one thing better than anyone else on this planet and put all your energy and soul into it. And I think when we made that decision and started seeing the benefits of it, we quickly realized the power of that, of what focus can do. That is so powerful and it's such a great message because so often on Entrepreneur on Fire, the aha moments are just these wonderful things. And the fact of the matter is aha moments are not always wonderful. Sometimes they're painful realizations like, oh gosh, this is where we should be going with the product or with the service or with our business. And you just define that so perfectly. And you're right, it's tough to kill your baby sometimes because that's what you guys started the business for and that was your passion, that's where your energy was going into. But now you realize that if you really want to make the impact that you want to, if you want to really make the impact to your surroundings and mother nature in general that you're really embodying as a business, scalability is huge for you. So you guys are going in that direction. I absolutely salute you for sacrificing your baby to the greater good. It's really impressive to see. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. That means a lot. So, Nikhil, have you had an I've made it moment yet? I don't think so. I, I, think, I think we're really excited where, where things have gone, the response from the community, from our retail partners, from our team, like having an amazing team around us now. Um, but... I think one thing that drives Alex and I both is a sense that we, you know, we have a constant, I think, passion and ambition where we know how, where we want to take this company. That's no less than a household name, a household brand. When you think about connecting to food, you think about back to the roots. And um, I think we're almost afraid of having that, that thought of we've made it, you know, because we don't ever want to have made it. I think that's, that takes away your, your passion and your hustle. And uh, we're still as hungry as we were the first day to keep on you know, working our butts off and going back to the roots. So I don't know I'm excited, but definitely don't think we made it. Uh, I don't ever want to think that, to be honest with you. So again, I'm just continuously impressed by your attitude because I hesitate to even ask you that question because being such a young entrepreneur and so young in business, I pretty much knew what your answer was going to be, but I thought it still was an important one to just to gauge the type of entrepreneur you are. And I just always stress the Fire Nation that it's so important to set lofty goals because that's what drives you forward and to make your passion just work with those goals is so important and so powerful. But once you reach these, those goals, it truly is important to step back and just really appreciate the journey that you've come and the achievements that you've accomplished because it's all about the journey. And those people that just reach their goals and put their heads down and just hit another goal even higher and then just drive forward to that, they miss the journey, and it's so important. I know for a fact you are not missing the journey. You're enjoying the ups and the downs and the roller coaster. How do you do that? I think, honestly, one thing that's, and I totally agree with you, I'm, I'm having an absolute blast. And uh, Alex, you know, my partner, co founder, I, we both, I think, a lot of times attribute it to, to ours and our relationship, to be honest with you. And we all, I think, we just, since day one, clicked so well. And um, we always say that working, when we're working together, it, makes, it doesn't seem like work. It just seems like fun. We both just are on the very same mindset of our values, of our mission, of our vision, and the attitude we want to bring to work. And it's just, I think it's, it's so important, you know, that idea of like a partnership and having a partner when you're starting a business because it makes it so much more just, just fun. You have someone you can constantly bounce off things with. And um, it's, uh, I have a blast working. I mean, you know, we work, we've been working for two and a half years now, every single day, 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. And we're still so excited that next morning to kind of see each other again and get back to work and get back cranking again. And, um, and I think as we've grown now, it's our team around us. Like, we are a really young, super energetic, super passionate team. And, uh, that just makes coming into work so much fun and around people who you, who just share the same values and passion. And it's, it's it makes work so much fun. So, um, we, uh, it's one of our, it's so one of the big things we hire on. Like, do, do people we want to work with and not just work with, but like want to spend time with and hang out with? Because at the end of the day, I think when you're an entrepreneur, there's not much separation between like personal and professional life. Like this is your life or your company is your life. And we all say you better be damn well sure you're having fun doing it because that's all you're doing pretty much. So uh, it's, uh, it's the people you're around, long story short. 
Great point. And let's use that to transition now to our next topic, which is your current business. You have a lot of great things that are going on, a lot of fun activities. It just seems like it's hopping and bopping. A lot of stuff's going on behind you. We can hear it. We're living it with you right now. That's exciting. But what's one thing that's really getting you pumped up about your business right now? Short term, which is we're about to hit a big, big part of the year. I think we're saying 70% of our business is coming in the next um, two and a half months. So that's a big thing in mind right now. Like it's just, I, I love that, that pressure of the mistakes you make right now are amplified where they're really bad. And the good things you do with sex, successes you have are amplified and they're amazing right now this time of the year because there's so much on the line. So it's something that I think Alex and I are both just really fired up for it, um, for that challenge, for that pressure. And it's, it's fun. It's fun kind of having that. It's just a constant adrenaline rush right now for the next two and a half months to like execute head down. Let's see where we can take this thing in these two and a half months. Um, that's one thing I mind right now. And I think too is just really excited about, about new development, kind of where the company's going. Um, we just actually... Uh, our got approval. We're going to be launching the Toys R Us actually in about a month. So that's going to be a, that's a huge new account for something we're both been personally really excited about for a while. Um, it's part of our vision of really connecting kids to this whole this whole movement of making food personal again and making growing your own food fun and easy. So that's a big thing I'm really excited about is going deeper into the education and, and kids route um, and then launching a new product um, Q1 of next year. So a couple exciting things like more a little more medium and long term but short term. It's just uh, it's a fun time of the year. I feel like I'm, it's a constant adrenaline rush right now. I love it. And you've alluded to focus a couple times now, and that's such a valuable word to me. I love it. I use it every single day in my business. And I use the acronym that I just loved when I heard years and years ago for focus, which is follow one course until success. I've always loved that acronym. It doesn't mean that you're just doing one particular thing, but you know, you set your mission and you drive after it and you just don't get distracted by all the bright, shiny objects around you. And you're in a very busy time right now, Nikhil, and your time is valuable. So I really appreciate you taking the time to join us here, Fire Nation, at something like this. And you've decided this was worthwhile your venture. And I can tell you right now, I truly believe that you've made a good decision Right now, we're getting over 100,000 individual downloads every single month, and the audience is growing. It's full of passionate entrepreneurs and people that just really resonate with people like yourself, want to support what you're doing in your business venture. So the Fire Nation community is a powerful one, and I really am glad you joined us here today. Oh, thank you so much for, uh, for having us on. This is a, it's an honor, and uh, your, support, your support means a ton to us. I think at this, this stage, too, it's just... Uh, what gets you up in the morning is people like you, man, the community like this that just you feel like has your back and is supporting you through those ups and downs. So really appreciate um, inviting us on and excited to kind of connect more with the, the community and, uh, and stay involved as well. Stay it's, a, it's a very powerful community, Fire Nation itself, because it's full of entrepreneurs and the entrepreneur community in general is such an impressive and powerful community. It's just really exciting to see how it's growing and how it's changing just with how the world as is getting more and more flat every single day as more people, not just in the country, but in the world are having access to podcasts like this, to the internet, so they can get to your website and just see what you're doing and experience that firsthand too. It's a very exciting time. I'm not going to let you go yet. We still have a couple more things we want to talk about. One thing in particular, where did Back to the Roots come from? Tell us the story of the name of your company. Of the name. Okay. Um, funny story, and this is another, another lesson learned. So I was in Ghana um, my junior year in college studying abroad. And when I was there, I um, fell in love with the fabrics out there, designs out there, and um, actually got like a hoodie made out of this really, really cool traditional fabric from Ghana. And this idea kind of struck me like, that's a really cool concept. Can you take you know, indigenous t traditional designs and turned that into um, Western clothing and started. We had this idea in my head for this company, like a better clothing, better world um, clothing, and BTTR, B and just created a company called Better Ventures, BTTR Ventures. Um, and as we started this, that was kind of the back of my head for a while. And as we started this whole mushroom business up, we did have a name for a company uh, for a while, 
And then we were applying to that grant for our business plan competition where we got 5K from our chancellor. And it was all super last minute. And we needed, we had to submit the application like in a couple hours to get hit the deadline. And we were like, Alex, <laughs> like, crap, we need, we need a name. Like, what are we going to call this company? At that point, I mean, we were just still so just trying to figure out the science of it. Does it even work? Does it even grow? Where I was like, oh, well, I had this idea like a while ago for something company called Better Ventures, BTTR Ventures. Um, what about that? And Alex was like, cool, I'm, you know, let's do it. We got to submit something. Let's do it right now. And we put, put that down and it kind of stuck since then. And we started off calling our company Better Ventures, BTTR Ventures, which stood for Back to the Roots, but it's more a play on words like better mushrooms, better this, better that as we grew. And the goal was to have that BTTR be our big brand. And lesson learned as we grew, our first box we launched, our first mushroom kit, we launched it in stores. We were so proud of this thing. Like, this is gonna, this is gonna be it. It's gonna solve everything. And it said better mushrooms on there. And I remember within like a couple of weeks, we had it's a ton of feedback coming in from people. It was like, is it butter? Is it bitter? What is this thing? And we were just, like smacking our heads, like, oh man, do we? How do we not catch that? Um, and then I realized, you know what? Let's drop the whole full name and just go with what it stands for, what it means, back to the roots. Um, and have been, you know, rebranded everything. I've been running with that since then. So um, I think I think it was a great decision since then because I think it just it means something a lot. You just hear back to the roots. It just, it, I think it's a it creates some kind of emotions in people's minds, which is really cool. It's something we wanted to create, but definitely learned a lot of lessons around branding and naming <laughs> through that whole the whole process. Uh, you know. As entrepreneurs, we often try to be so clever and oftentimes that gets the best of us. And it just brings me back to my army days of the acronym KISS, which is keep it simple, stupid. And that's so true in business. And I could just sit here for a couple hours and tell you the initial names that I came up with for my company. And obviously, entrepreneur on fire, just that phrase, it speaks to what we do here. You, you're an entrepreneur on fire. And if I tried to be clever, people just wouldn't get it and it just wouldn't resonate with people. And that initial click to get people in and hooked may never happen. And the same with you. And so now that people understand your brand and your name, you're going to reach even a larger audience. Yeah, thank you. That's been um, goes back to just making, it's all learning through mistakes, right? So you learn, you do them and you're moving so quick. I feel at times as an entrepreneur, you're moving. 100 miles an hour and it's just you're going to make mistakes just how fast can you react so um, couldn't agree more and let's now move into the last topic this is my favorite part of the show we're about to enter the lightning round and this is where I provide you with a series of questions and you provide us with amazing and mind-blowing answers does that sound like a plan sounds good (laughs) what was holding you back from becoming an entrepreneur an idea I believed in. I think, actually, no, no. Uh, I think a partner, a partner who I enjoyed working with, because ideas were run through my mind. I think when Alex and I met, that was that was a big thing was our relationship. So I think it's finding someone you could really enjoy working with every day. What is the best business advice that you ever received? Ah, uh, it was uh, a quote. We asked. We we had the, we got a grant from Hitachi for uh, fifty thousand dollars business plan competition, and we asked. We had the chance to sit down with the CEO and ask him a question. What's the key to success from the CEO of Hitachi? And he said two simple things. He was like, it's good health and it's good partnerships. And that stuck with us. It's so simple. He's like, he's this older guy, but super fit, tons of energy. Just add, and he's like, good partnership and good health stuck with us. Um, something we never forget. So we try to make sure we always keep ourselves healthy. At the end of the day, if we're not healthy, nothing else matters, you know? What is something that's working for you or your business right now? Transparency. It's the biggest thing. Transparency in, in marketing and transparency in everything we're doing. Um, our customers have responded and rewarded us for doing so. So you're a young guy, Nikhil. Do you have an internet resource like an Evernote that you just are in love with that you can share with Fire Nation? It's, uh, it's, it's music, man. I, uh, our whole team, we, we can't live without it. So we're uh, Pandora is right here in Oakland and it's an easy answer, but we, we're, our company's fueled off of music constantly bumping throughout the day and it's like a little party in here nonstop and um, got to give a big shout out to Pandora, our little Oakland neighbors right here for creating a, it's an awesome experience. Let's just kind of keep it, keep the party going 24-7 on a mushroom farm. And it goes back to your best advice. You got to stay healthy, you got to stay energized and music helps you do 
both because you're probably bopping around a little bit. You're dancing, you're energized. It's all in one. Exactly. I got to have fun. If you're having fun, nothing else matters. So I think if you have fun, your customers feel it, your buyers feel it, everyone feels it. They want to have fun too. So just got to have fun doing what you're doing. <laughs> what is your favorite business book? Favorite business book? Um, you know what? I think one book that I thought was really powerful is from Chip Conley. He wrote a book called Emotional Equations recently. Um, and uh, he's, been a re- he's been a good mentor of ours and he's given us some amazing advice and uh, respect him so much for what he's built. And I think it was so powerful him bringing emotions in the business as something which I feel is not really talked about that much. You know, business is supposed to be like you're supposed to be cut and dry and, you know, you're making these stern decisions, and it's just so cool to see him bring emotions and the power that emotions have in business. At the end of the day, it's all relationships, it's all personal, and if you can understand that part of it and understand emotions, um, it's you're so much more successful in business. So, Emotional Equations by Chip Conley. Wonderful. So, this next question is the last one, Nikhil. It's kind of challenging, so just take your time, have fun with it, and come back with us with an amazing answer. If you woke up tomorrow morning in a brand new world, it's identical to Earth, but you knew nobody. You still have all the experience and knowledge that you currently have, but only $500 in your pocket and a laptop with internet access. All your food and shelter is taken care of, but what would you do in the next seven days? My first, when my, my mind goes to you saying that is, it's building community. That's what I want to do. I'd want to spend that 500 bucks to, to gather people around me, to throw an event, to meet people. I think that's the biggest thing is the most, that's all life is. It's relationships and it's people. So I'd use that 500 bucks to get online, create an event, invite people and start building relationships and uh, getting things going again. Because I think that'd be the biggest thing I would have missed. And that's the thing I would want to get back to most is the relationships and people. So I'd spend that money throwing a kick-ass event and getting a, uh, people out here and building community again. That is a great piece of actionable advice. And you've given us some great actionable advice this entire interview, Nikhil, and we are all better for it. Give Fire Nation one parting piece of guidance, then give yourself a plug, and then we'll say goodbye. <laughs> parting piece of guidance. Uh, I think the, the one thing I've got to say is that one, the one thing I think I've learned about business is that there's no real key to success. It's just two things. It's hustle and it's passion. Are you willing to work your butt off for something you really believe in? And um, that's just the two quotes, two of our values in our walls, hustle and passion. We have a massive letters across our whole company. Um, it's, 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 that's that simple. If, you, if you're willing to work your butt off for something you believe in, um, good things will come and people will come out to support you. So, And a plug for the company. Uh, amazing holiday gift coming up. It's a really cool. Or go to Home Mushroom Kit. Check it out at backtotheroots.com. Willow brown box goes up to a pound and a half of pearl oyster mushrooms right out of the box, all going to recycled coffee grounds, um, 1995. Really cool, like under 20 green gift idea for your parents or kids or family members. Um, just trying to get people involved in growing your own food where you don't need a green thumb or a big backyard. Put on your kitchen windowsill and in 10 days um, have your f- big crop of fresh mushrooms grown right out of the box. You can throw in some pastas or tacos or soups and enjoy them. So, um, that's our plug. Check it out at backtotheroots.com or go to your local Whole Foods or Home Depot and pick one up. Awesome. I will link all this up in the show notes, Nikhil. Fire Nation, support this young, passionate entrepreneur. Great Christmas gift. You can't go wrong. It's unique. Everybody loves a good mushroom or at least 99% of people that I know do. So, <laughs> Nikhil, thanks again so much. Fire Nation, we salute you and we'll catch you on the flip side. So much. All right, Fire Nation, are you pumped up to create your own podcast now? Don't let your lack of time, knowledge, or skills hold you back. All you need to do is record an MP3, send it to my team, and we do the rest. It's really that simple. Visit www.podplatform.com to find out more. Thank you for joining us at entrepreneuronfire.com, your daily dose of inspiration. Prepare to ignite.